So we're Root Del Sol. My name's Joel Gregory Hayes, and this is Keegan Takori, and this is our rig behind us here. I was working at Vancouver International Airport on night shifts and uh, I came up with this crazy idea. I moved down to Oregon and started building the van with a company called Solarola. During that process, I met Keegan online. He wanted to come on board, so I told him to buy a flight to Fairbanks, Alaska. I picked him up and then we started driving for the Arctic Circle down to Argentina. Usually a project like this would probably, you know, take a group of engineers maybe a year or so to build, maybe a little less, but we built it in two months. <laughs> a lot of electrical engineering involved and a lot of new information for me. We had to retrofit a solar array to the vehicle. We can go up to 300 kilometres or 200 miles. This is one of the things we're trying to highlight with this journey. The efficiency of electric vehicles, EVs, but also the some of the problems that, you know, innovators and engineers are trying to overcome with this new generation of electric vehicles. Yeah. All right, so this is the rig. It's called the International E-Star. Solar Roll is the company that built it. They operate out of Oregon. So if you want to look them up, solarroller.com. This is a big spare tire. I had to retrofit this to the van because it didn't have a spare tire before. There was no room for it. We're going to paint the van. It's not completely finished, so it kind of looks ugly right now, but whatever. Retrofitted some ice cream van style windows. You pop it out like this, so it's good for airflow when we're in those hotter climates. This is our charging port. We have a standard J1772 port. We can plug into the grid and charge off of any regular J1772 plug. We try not to try to use the solar panels as much as possible. Probably where the magic of the vehicle is, the design up here, this is Solar Rollers design and they specialize in making these fold out arrays. We have 6,000 watts on the roof and 1,000 watts on the back. It's quite simple, you just unscrew some wing nuts and pull out these arms and then pull out some solar panels. Like this. It's quite an art. Just secure it in place like this. And that's it. Vans usually have an awning anyway. Why not make that your awning solar power? This could be viable for anyone living in a van. We have winches to, to tilt the angle of the panels so that we can capture more sunlight. Being able to angle the panels towards the sun is super important. On the back here, we have um, our satellite panels. They're our most efficient panels. The other ones are big. We have more wattage up there. These come off. You just sort of take them around. We're trying to build some stands for them at the moment too. Inside of this magical cupboard here, we have all of our electronic wizardry. So here is our big eight kilowatt inverter. The average US home with like say four bedrooms or three bedrooms in it uses about 30 kilowatt hours of energy a day. We're working with 120 kilowatt hours of energy, which is quite significant. Here we have our two charge controllers. We have one hooked up to our roof panels and one hooked up to those back satellite panels. The reason they have to be separate is because of voltages and you get more efficiency if you have two different systems. Here's our hub. We can control most of the internal goings on of this with that. And it also helps us like with battery indication status, like charge status and stuff like that too. This is a manual battery management system. 13 cells at the start of the string, you have a certain voltage and at the end of the string, you have another voltage. I look at this and I look for balance. I look for the voltages to be pretty similar and if they're not it means that there's something going on and I have to pull the battery apart and start fixing it so it's just a safety mechanism. Um, in here are our solar voltaic combiners, it's another safety mechanism. This is our AC box too, pretty much the same thing. We have like our kitchen, our hot water and everything hooked up in there so once again, if we get an over voltage, it'll break that. So this is an electric vehicle charger. To transfer energy from our built battery into our drivetrain battery, we have to charge the van off of itself. So we're transferring energy from one battery to another using the, um, the juice box. One of the cool things about that is that we can actually charge other electric vehicles. Say so Nissan Leaf turned up here right now, we could start charging them for, for them. Yeah, it's really cool. It's by no means a workhorse. This vehicle is not going to get you to and from work every day and all that sort of stuff. 
we calculated it would take about two days yeah. to charge the batteries completely. But yeah, absolutely. There have been some places up in northern British Columbia, for instance, we had it sit on the side of the road for two weeks. If you're an RVer, more like even just a young van lifer, you don't want to move anywhere too fast anyway. So why not just chill, let the sun charge you up? You've got enough energy for your like day-to-day your -day living needs. Not necessarily enough to move every day, but you pretty much don't want to move every day. So I'll show you in here. So that's my double bed, that's Jolly's double bed. But when we want, we can lift up the mattresses and lift the table up like this, and we can make it a big horseshoe. Um, it's just essentially like a workstation. We just have surplus amounts of electricity to charge all our batteries for our cameras, our laptops. So we've got a range of power points all throughout it. I think a lot of van lifers don't usually have electricity. They might have, you know, 330 watt um, solar array on the roof, but nothing like what we have. So we just actually just have like such a surplus amount. Plenty of books to show. We still haven't finished all the timber work here. That's what's happening in Vancouver before we leave for the US. Um, but for the most part, we're almost there where we keep all our food and stuff. We have an induction stove. You can cook through, again, using all our electricity. The fridge, which is amazing to have. On demand, hot water um, and cold water, of course. Four gallons, I think, of water underneath. Grey water tank under this as well. Within the next two weeks, we're gonna seal this off, uh, make it watertight and make this into a shower and also um, have a toilet in there as well. This is our journey. This is where we're going. In northern Alaska where we started, we got to here in Vancouver and we're following this entire coast all the way down to Tierra del Fuego in Argentina. Classic captain's cap, giant windscreen, which is really, really nice, especially when we're driving through Alaska and all the mountain range and stuff. Have a little fob. Oh, there we go. The loudest noise in this vehicle when we're driving is actually like the rocks being kicked up from underneath. Yeah, so that red line obviously is like the amperage drawer and this blue line is its regenerative braking. What you see there is like energy going back into the system. As you can see, we've only done 6,000 miles <laughs> to date on this rig, so it's quite new. We've never lived in a better time to achieve something. There's unlimited, untapped resources at your fingertips. Like before you would have had to have gone to a university to learn about engineering on this scale. And I literally got on the internet and messaged a guy off of YouTube. And then I went and built this crazy rig with him. Yeah, it's been really eye-opening just how achievable things are. And, and if there's anything that I want to do with all this, it's to inspire people, inspire the people that, you know, are dreaming of making a difference in the world and really just saying, you know, you can do it. We're very much just trying to figure out how to do it on the way. A little bit of research on YouTube and that kind of stuff, but most of it's been like on the road kind of research. Who knows, maybe this is just not the way to go and maybe we're doing the wrong thing, but we would never know unless we tried it. We're really trying to highlight, you know, the communities and the individuals on this journey that are transitioning towards renewable energies. We're gonna be out here for the next like two years. <laughs> Highlighting this, filming this documentary and um, come join us. Get in contact with us, we're 100% you know, approachable.